yes, I can definitely praise the Lord for my salvation. Um, just for something super simple today, um, I was in Spanish and my for the past few classes we just had a sub so like but um so anyway <laughs> um and then my teacher's just like I'll be giving back some work and one of the quizzes we did that was like more of a pop quiz um and she's just like um you guys didn't do very good on it and I, for some reason I got scared but I'm like I'm not Spanish I'll be fine um and then she gave me the quiz and on it, it was a, develop, a developing, which in our marking system isn't very good. And then I looked at the top and it was a different Sophia. So I was like, this is the wrong Sophia. And then she gave me my quiz and I did really good on it. And for the other sheets, I did really good on it. And so, yeah, I guess I can just praise the Lord for that simple need, I guess. Sophia ne neglected to mention it was a Spanish quiz. So I was thinking you got to do good on that one. So kind of a failure if you don't do well. But anyway, praise the Lord. I had to do French in school. I hated French. Oh, worst language. Uh, if you know how to speak it, it's fine, but I'm trying to write it down. Uh, all right, another testimony. Sister Amy Wong and Sister Sharon Bernal will have it in that order. Yes, I can thank the Lord for saving me. Um, before I went away for um, this trip um, um, out of town, and um, I just came up and um, committed my trip to the Lord and asked him to um, just make everything um, smooth and that um, it would go um, according to yeah, what, what he will have it be. And um, and I really praise the Lord because, um, yeah, when we got to the airport, um, I realized that um, my ticket, um, the name on the ticket wasn't the same name um, as it is on my driver's license. And um, and when I showed them my my piece of ID and, and they're like, this is not you. <laughs> And um, and I tried to explain to them that um, it was hard to explain, but I, you know, I, I said to them, you know, this was my name um, that I um, use, but I didn't have it um, changed legally, so it's different. Um, and so the girl said, um, well, then you're going to have to, um, you know, pay another ticket because um, it's it's not not um, matching the your um, your ticket and your ID and um, um, and but anyways um, it was um, actually very early when we checked in and um, and I just left and um, and I was thinking oh you know what can what reasons I can give them or maybe make up something <laughs> so that they can. I know, like, feel sorry for me or whatever. But then I just thought, you know, I committed, you know, my trip to the Lord. And, um, you know, I don't want to, um, yeah, like we're, we're, you know, people that uphold the truth. So I, I don't want to have to lie or, or whatever, right? And, and so I just asked Jimmy, you know, like, you know, can we pray about this? Because, um, um, you know, I, I don't want... Um, you know, this thing to um, spoil my trip. And um, um, an hour later, we went back to the, the check-in and um, and we had another person and I just explained the same thing. And um, and, and that uh, gentleman, and, and he was happy. And he said, oh, I could just add your name in there so that, you know, you won't have any hassle. I was like, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, and, and it was just that easy. Um, you know, I really praise the Lord that he... You know, I just feel like, you know, wherever we go, um, yeah, if, when we commit our ways to the Lord, the Lord just um, want to be there for us. And um, and also praise the Lord for just, um, um, I, I suppose, just being the light there in um, a city that, um, um, yeah, doesn't have the, the, um, the knowledge of, of God. And um, there are people that I met. They're um, 
they have some religious backgrounds, but they don't um, have the truth. And because of that, um, you know, when we, you know, see the way they live our lives and, and just open up the Bible and it, it's just very different, you know, and, you know, they can say they're religious, they, they go to church, but, um, you know, we know that it's, it's, um, it's not, um, it's not going to please God in the end. And, um, and I just praise the Lord because I had the opportunity to, you know, just talk to a few of them um, and just explain to them, you know, just even like recent um, events, um, you know, why things are happening the, the way they are. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just very grateful because we have this message that, um, you know, not only it'll save ourselves, but, yeah, people out there, um, um, I, I don't think they think too much about what is going on because their lives are already very busy, you know, with work and, and with, you know, um, looking after children or, or just, you know, stuff. But, um, you know, I mean, you know, our lives are, are busy here as well, but we always um, set aside that time for the Lord. And even at home, you know, when we're not at the meetings, you know, we're, we're talking with the Lord and we're seeking for the Lord to teach us, you know, things that we don't know so that we can be taught first so that we can, so we have something to teach others. And, and that's just very, very special because, um, the world needs that the world doesn't have that out there and and i'm just so so grateful because the lord um saved me first so that um yeah then we can um give other people hope and um yeah and let them know what's yeah it's coming so yeah i thank the lord every day for my salvation Um, yeah, I just praise the Lord for, um, first of all, for saving me, and I received the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues, and I was baptized by full immersion in water. Um, I just wanted to praise the Lord just for, uh, I committed something to the Lord, and it's, it has a little bit to do um, with my work, just because there's a lot of expectations in, in my new role, and just some things that I, you know, I felt like I, it was a little bit lacking on my part. And I wanted to commit that to the Lord just to, so that he could help me. And I, I praise the Lord because he answered um, very quickly. And I, you know, because I'm, I'm not busy enough, I've just found myself enrolled in, um, in a program. So I'm back to school and working at the same time. Um, and at first, I was a little bit apprehensive about that. I know that it will help me personally, and it will help me with my work. But at the same time, there's quite a bit of commitment when you're doing school work, and I haven't been to school in a very long time. So it's a bit of a different environment for me. And, um, you know, but the fact that it was sponsored and it was offered to me, I, you know, I took it as an answer from the Lord because I did ask and the Lord provides. So I praise the Lord for, um, for providing that for me. And I've been doing it for the past, um, this is the third week and the Lord is really helping me uh, through that courses. And um, just a lot, quite a bit of it is a bit tricky, but I just praise the Lord that he's helping me and guiding me through that. And I also wanted to praise the Lord. Yesterday, we had um, somebody high up in our company do a big a big uh, leadership training for all the leaders in, in our office. And there's quite a lot of us. And the topic was about change because our company has just recently gone through so many changes um, and so many changes coming at us. And some of it, some of it we have control of, and some of it we don't have control. But the point of that, um, the point of that, uh, um, um, I can, I don't know what to call it, like seminar, whatever it is, because it's it's a few hours. It's it's really to get us to get us in a point where we understand the cycle of change, and so we can identify where our teams are in that cycle of change and how we can how we can bring them through that cycle and and get them get them there get them at the other end much quicker and also about how we respond to change and what our attitudes are towards change and i praise the lord because 
going through that and listening to her and, and, and going through all of the, um, the, the uh, exercises that we went through, I realized how, you know, uh, how compared to others, how the Lord has helped me be good at change. Not that I like change, but I understand at the end of it, you know, and through it that the Lord is with me. And I guess it's the faith that the Lord gives us and the, uh, the the um the hope that the lord gives us and and having a vision that you know that we're not hampered by that change that we don't we're not reliant on other people and we're not reliant on circumstances that regardless what it is of what it is the lord sees us through and and that's been all of our testimonies we've gone through many changes in life and the lord has brought us through each and every one of that. And I just really praise the Lord for that um, because I know that that's what I stand on. Like, it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't rock the boat for me when, when there's changes coming at us. At the end of it, um, I can remember um, when I sat down for a ministry a long time ago with pastors that he's excited about change. And I didn't think I would be excited about change. But I realized that I am excited about change because I know that there's something new the Lord has for me. And I just really praise the Lord for, um, for those thoughts. All right. Praise the Lord. Good to hear those testimonies. Good to hear what the Lord's doing in our lives and uh, supporting us in, in everything that we come across. All right. Well, we know that the, the encouragement was there for all the brothers to uh, consider something to share tonight. And I just wanted to give an encouragement that, um, you know, don't hold back. If it's a scripture, that's okay. It's just a scripture. There's no age restriction. Um, so if you've never given a, a word before and you're terrified and you want to give a five minute scripture, do it. I was going to start somewhere, but we do need some brothers. Show of hands, what have we got? Paul? James? Nick? What else we got? Asher? Anyone else? It's okay if you're more experienced, brothers. It's all good. Got something to share? Anyone else? All right. We've got one, two, three, four, five brothers. All right. So let me do math here. All right. Let's go up to no more than 10 minutes, maximum 10 minutes for each brother. Does that work? And we'll have it in that order. Um, actually, Paul, you wanted me to prefer the other brothers, so he did call me earlier and says, I have some thoughts, but prefer the other brothers. Ian's asked me to do the same thing. That's all good. So we'll start with uh, James Thornley. First up, here we go. So we'll have James and then Brother Nick, Brother Asher, Brother Paul, and then Brother Ian at the end. Ten minutes, please. All right, if we can uh, turn to Ephesians in chapter 6, please. Ephesians chapter 6. It's had a blessing here. It's pretty simple. Uh, just putting on the whole armor of God and how important it is to put on the whole armor of God especially with what we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, just what was uh, making me think about these thoughts is that, uh, you know, Dre is almost a year old. He'll be one year uh, on the 27th. And during this one year, uh, Gem and I probably haven't had one decent night's sleep. It's, it's been a long, long go. And we 
you know, some days, some nights are better than others, but for the most part, uh, we are just running on empty, running on fumes. And the thing that I just try to minister to our, to, uh, Jem and myself is that, you know, just the Lord's strength, the Lord's peace, all, all those things that we can't do this in our own strength. We can't do this through our own power, especially when it comes to, uh, to sleep. You know, there's things with kids where, um, you know, all these different milestones that, that uh, babies reach and we get excited for all of them and we're, we don't really rush them. We're just, oh, that's awesome. He's crawling. Oh, that's awesome. He's standing. Oh, that's awesome. He said, mama, dada, that's so cool. Um, but we weren't really rushing anything. But the thing that we usually try to rush and that we're really trying to get them to do is sleeping properly because it affects us the most. And it really wears on us. And we just know that it's all just a matter of time. And eventually he'll get it. But during those, this time of the struggle, I just asked the Lord, just Lord, just continue to give us that strength, continue to give us that peace and all the things that the spiritual fruits that we're able to just get on with our day and function. And that's just a, an example with those, just that one thing that we're facing but it goes with anything, anything in the day, uh, with work, with school, with just people in general, with our own thoughts of the flesh is that we're not really powerful within ourselves. You know, the flesh can be arrogant and sometimes and try to take on things saying, oh, look at me, I can do it. Um, I'm like, you know, with, oh, I'm so manly or whatever, I can just take on all these things or whatever. I'm so like, it's all pomp and show but realistically in the flesh we're nothing and how important it is on a daily basis to wear this whole armor of god so in verse 13 of ephesians chapter 6 wherefore take up unto you the whole armor of god that ye may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And even in that verse 18, where it says, not only just putting on that whole armor of God, but praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit. And just this focus of all this stuff is just, it's in the spirit. We're not taking on anything of the flesh here. We're not taking on this, this fleshy armor, uh, all these different ways that you might be able to think, uh, I can do this in my own strength. Um, I'll just power through it. It's a weakness of the flesh, really. It's, the Lord's there. The armor's there. 24-7, all year, until we die. The, the armor's there. Well, even after we die, we'll be lifted up with the Lord. And then we get this new body. And this amazing thing that we're able to have with us at all times is something that we shouldn't just push off to the side. If we're struggling with something, why are we struggling with it? Why are we allowing ourselves to be in pain? Why are we allowing ourselves to be tired or weak or whatever? It's the, it's the flesh. The flesh is uh, weak and we're strong in the spirit. It's an amazing thing that the Lord puts all these scriptures in the word to uplift us, to show us that it doesn't matter what we go through. It doesn't matter what our flesh goes through. It doesn't matter what our mind goes through. We have this armor of God, and that's what it is. It's an armor of God. It's a spiritual armor that we're able to uh, put on at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, in the middle of the day, wherever, if we can get lost in our thoughts, where we can just feel like, 
uh, I'm a little bit down. I'm a little bit not there. I'm a little bit low. Just shake your head a little bit and be like, well, what am I doing? I'm just allowing my flesh to bear its burden on me where the, 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 the burden of the Lord is light. And that's this armor that we're able just to put on and everything deflects where, why do I have to suffer? Why do I have to bear this pain where I can just, the Lord's going to take it. The Lord's going to reflect all this pain. The Lord's going to take care of all these things. And the amazing thing about this armor of God is that it covers head to toe. There's uh, there's no spots of weakness. And that's even we're in the beginning of those scriptures where it says, take unto you the whole armor, everything on a day-to-day -day basis. And it doesn't matter what we go through. Praise the Lord that the Lord's there. The armor is there. And with whatever we face, we can just give it to the Lord and he'll take care of it. So that was my blessing. I'll leave it there and I'll hand it over to Brother Nick. Thank you, Brother James. Let's get some notes up here. <clears throat> um, Start in Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, and we'll just read a few scriptures here before I um, expound a little bit more. Jeremiah Chapter 2 and verse 31. And that's uh, just the word of the Lord speaking. O generation, see you the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say my people, where we are lords, we will come no more unto thee. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. And I was just uh, considering, in particular, the last part of that um, verse 32, where it says, my people have forgotten me days without number. And um, just on, on, on Sunday there, I shared a brief little testimony how, you know, when I was uh, not, not feeling well last week, and um, I was just laying there on the bed. And, um, you know, I had, I had time to just lay there and, um, you know, just, just think about things, you know, I, I was, I was feeling so nauseous. I, I couldn't stare at a phone. Um, so even if I couldn't fall asleep, um, you know, I, I had, I was left with myself and my own thoughts, you know, I couldn't read any books or anything like that. Um, I just laid there and, and just thought about things. And, and that's when, you know, I guess began thinking about the thoughts of the Lord and, you know, even, um, it was funny. I was, I was telling Alex as well that I was, um, getting like a, a headache because I had this song that I, the last song that I had heard on the radio and like some of the lyrics were just like repeating over and over in my head and it was making my head hurt. And then I just started thinking about hymns and, and choruses and, and singing those hymns and choruses and I could actually feel that headache going away. And just thinking about, you know, have, putting our mind um, to the thoughts of the Lord and um, it, I don't know what, what to, to term these, these, these thoughts. Um, it, it kind of got along the lines of um, giving time for, for the Lord to be on your mind. I don't know the best way to describe it. I subscribe, I'm still subscribed to um, my university's emails and, and uh, a newsletter comes out every week some of the innovations and creations that some of the students um, they're, they're researching there and in the robotics divisions and um, the, the different various uses they have and the, the things they're, they're thinking of and creating and, and um, all this innovation and um, all that, the time that they have to dedicate and focus to just doing that and, and um, reading some of that and, and just considering how um, you know, the, the inventors back in the day you know, they, um, like Isaac Newton sat at a tree and, and, you know, he was just considering things and, 
um, when you know the thought of gravity came came to him and, and all those calculations and uh, the people who invented calculus and electricity you know they they didn't have all the distractions of life to to bother them these these thoughts these creations <clears throat> they came to their minds because they just had time to <clears throat> sit down and just and rest and, and think upon uh, on things and just wonder and how much you know nowadays there's always something to keep your mind occupied um, there's so many um, devices we have these phones in our pockets um, there was this this video of this TED talk that I saw and it was like a social experiment that the speaker did at the front he said everyone um, put away your phone right now and and sit on it and just sit there and stare and, and just look at the screen um, and he didn't tell them how long he was going to get them to stare at the screen. And, um, you know, start, obviously people started fidgeting. Some people actually took their phones back out. And, and at the end of it, he said, you know, how hard was that to sit there and do nothing, do nothing at all, sit there and do absolutely nothing at all. And he explained how it's like the brain has to constantly be doing something. You know, it, we, the society has evolved to the point where we're just so busy that once we stop doing something we don't know what to do. And um, coming back to the scriptures here, you know, do we find ourselves so busy that we, 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 we have to fill up our time with something that we can't just sit down, read the scriptures or, or pray if we, we find nothing to do or, or, you know, when we do have time, how much time are we making for the Lord? To, to think upon him, think about, you know, look into the word and dive into it, the questions we have, to pray to the Lord and ask him to reveal it by, by his spirit. Um, we'll just read one more reference, just in, in Matthew, Matthew 16. <clears throat> Familiar account here in, in, in Matthew. Picking it up in verse 13 of Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say you that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed that unto thee, but by my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so Christ speaking here of the revelation of the Spirit. The revealing of this answer was not by a natural thought that came to Peter, but but through the Spirit revealed unto him from heaven. And um, you know, just thinking about you know our our day to day lives and, and how we we approach situations, you know, our, the decisions we made we we make, you know, what what is our purpose or what is our driving force behind why we do something? Is it a spirit led decision or is it you know, based on, you know, natural knowledge we have. And yeah, we have, you know, natural things that we need to take care of. And, you know, sometimes we, we might have lapses of judgment. Um, often in almost all cases of, of accidents, um, you know, one, one natural example in particular, the statistics of the SkyTrain um, here, all the accidents that have happened on the SkyTrain is when a human operator takes it over and tries to, um, put it back into the station. But otherwise, when it's on the computer and it, it drives itself, you know, without the interaction of man, it runs smoothly. And sometimes our, our way can get in the way of the Lord's way when we fill ourselves with our own thoughts, the world's thoughts and everything on the busyness of life, what we need to do. And we can forget our purpose. We can forget the Lord. And we can lose that that spark of creativity of when we we are faced with a situation, how we would deal with it, and then instead of looking to the Lord and having a revelation or, or the Lord or listening and stopping ourselves, the Lord telling us something, the still small voice, 
It says, hey, don't go this way, go that way. And then there is the blessing of the Lord in that spiritual revelation. And that's the foundation that, that Christ spoke here. This is what I will build my church on. The revelation of the spirit. This is, this is being led by the spirit. God working in our lives through that spirit to make decisions that will positively affect not only just us, but others around us. It's this overflowing of the spirit. And as we're topped up praying in fellowship, um, you know, in testimonies, you know, it's, it's infectious and it spreads one to another and, and people notice this and they see it and they're drawn to it. And um, that was the blessing I had. I think Brother Asher is next. All right. Thanks, Brother Nick. Um, if we could all please turn to Isaiah 35. That's okay. Isaiah 35. Um, so I just have one scripture here today um, that I had a particular blessing in for at least a week now. Um, recently on, um, I've gotten uh, so Instagram, which is a social media account, and on it, um, you get reels, just little things that are little clips. Um, I'm sure most of us are aware of what they are. And recently I've been getting a lot of uh, Christian reels, which is always a little fun to look at. But um, recently I got one and um, I looked and I was like, oh, that's familiar. And it was just um, quoting that one hymn that we sing. It's earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal or can't remove. And um, that's although it was just like a simple thing that I came across recently, for some reason it's been on my heart for um, this entire week. And anytime something, anything would come up, I would just constantly be, have that hymn stuck in my head, just, um, just playing with any little thing. It's really made me notice um, sort of what was going around around me, especially in my school. I find school is a place of great sorrow. So um, yeah, I, it was definitely somewhere that, I was definitely in a place where I'd noticed that in the world, there was a lot of sorrow. And um, so this scripture um, sort of um, tied those thoughts all together for me. And it's Isaiah 35, verse 10. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with song and with everlasting joy upon their heads. And they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And um, that was just, that's basically what I had a blessing in. I was, have a lot of conversation with friends and it all seems to be very sad and bleak conversations um, a lot of the time. Not that that's all that we talk about, but still for some reason that is a theme that consistently is there. And um, with everybody in school at the moment, I have people that I work with who just seem stressed, anxious, and have all these problems. And yet I don't have any of those problems. And I can say that for certainty. And anytime I do have one of those problems, I can go to the Lord and I pray about it. And then suddenly those problems are gone. And that's just such a mighty blessing I have that we have obtained gladness and joy. And it can sometimes be easy to forget, especially with myself. I find it's very easy to forget and just think that sorrow and sighing is the only option when it comes to a lot of things. Um, but it's just, just even remembering that we have obtained gladness and joy just sort of gives me that peace and that um, well, joy in a way that um, the Lord has given us this answer for, to all of our problems. I just had a simple blessing in that and I'll hand it over to uh, Brother Thornley. If we can go to Matthew 13, please. Very, very simple blessing I had in, uh, in things that we see. <clears throat> It's, uh, it's amazing to, to come to the meetings and to forget about the things that are out there in the world and to just take hold of the things of the Lord, to allow ourselves to grow in his grace and, and learn of his things. It's, uh, you can actually feel yourself growing inside or filling up inside when you, when you hear the testimonies and the hymns and the choruses and the blessings that the brothers are sharing. Um, in Matthew 13 and verse 10, 
And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And a parable is a, uh, um, it's usually a fictitious story that has a, a, a morally good um, outcome. And uh, it is normally has something to do with, uh, it's normally religious. So something that Jesus said, it's a story that Jesus said to prove a point. And uh, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall it be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I un speak I to them in parables, because they seeing not, and hearing, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And that's the primarily primary thing that I want to touch on is when people talk about somebody being blind a lot, most of the time they think of it being an, as a natural, somebody that's naturally blind and cannot see things. But Jesus speaks to us in parables. And I was liking this unto an understanding because when somebody understands something, they see what the other person means. They have an understanding. And even if they're naturally blind, they can still understand. And we could very easily witness to somebody who is naturally blind. And if they have an understanding to go, hey, I'm not right with the Lord. They're still able to receive the spirit and be baptized and, and go to the kingdom because they see. In verse, I'm not going to have time to get to it, so we'll just read verse 16. It was going to be my last one. But, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and for your ears, for they hear. So when we received the Spirit and came unto salvation, God enlightened us that we had an understanding of his word. And we can look at this word, like the other thoughts we've heard, brothers looking into the word to give them an understanding that they could stand up and share that blessing, that we could all see what they saw. And we can rejoice in that. If we can go to John 9, please. John 9 and in verse 1, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And once again, when we came to the Lord, we were not naturally blind, but we were spiritually blind. We did not have an understanding of what the scriptures meant. And there's, there's so many people that I've heard in, 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 that, that do not have the spirit that, that I've heard my brothers and sisters share and say that they were explaining something to somebody. And because they didn't have the spirit, they go, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't understand what you mean. So praise the Lord that he, he does make it simple. And when we received the spirit and our eyes were opened, and we have that understanding that the Lord is real, that the Lord is true. I always remember Sister Alita, first night when she got baptized. She came out of the waters of baptism. She, she just received she was looking at everybody and she's going, it's true, it's true, it's all true. She saw something that night. And that's what we all saw when we received. We saw that God was true. In verse four, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. 
As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And why did we see, why did we see the things of the Lord once we received? It's because we accepted the light of the world into our lives. And we were now able to see the scriptures. We were no longer blind to them. Verse 6, when he, had, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made a clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is, being, which is by interpretation sent. He went, therefore, and washed and came seeing. And that's what we did to get an understanding of this word. And we may not understand the whole thing, but we understand enough to remain saved. We understand enough to see what our brothers and sisters need to be a blessing. And the Holy Spirit was sent to us to open our eyes that we may see. So I'll just leave them there and hand over to Brother Ian. Paul. Uh, let's go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, and let's start from verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors um, until the, uh, the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So just this likeness here from verse 1, that uh, an heir is, is like a child, and isn't that different from a servant? Because they are under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. So as we know, a, a child is very much, um, I guess, well, they're a dependent, aren't they? So they completely and solely depend on their parents. You couldn't just, uh, you know, have a, have a five-year-old and say, hey, get out, go get a job, uh, go, go figure it out, go figure out life. You know, they, they, they are completely at the mercy of, of their parents. And um, so it, it paints this picture here of, of, of children and a form of, of a bondage um, if we're likening it likening it unto, um, I guess, fallen man and, and uh, sin, man under the, the bondage and under the yoke of sin. Um, when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world, it says in verse 3. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How be it then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that, you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turned ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? And I was thinking about, um, I'm sure we've all seen this movie. It's, uh, well, the original one was, was in the 80s, Annie, Annie, the orphan. And they redid it in the early 2000s. Jamie Foxx, Cameron Diaz, wasn't as good as the first one. Um, 80s movies. I, uh, I have a special place in my heart for them. But in the movie, as we've all seen, Annie is, is in this orphanage, and it's a life of bondage, and it's a life of servitude. And the whole movie, well, half the movie, all she wants to do is be delivered and, and be adopted. And all these kids, they just want out. They just want to be delivered from that bondage and from that place of servitude. And so Annie gets adopted, Daddy Warbucks, and he is, he is like a, a savior figure. He has 
all of this this wealth and and provides her with everything. He's he's a good man and all of these things. And um, what was done throughout the movie, which was great, was that Annie always had a good attitude. You know, even when she was in servitude and even when she was, you know, in the bondage of that orphanage, she she tried to she remained happy and things like that. And then she she gets adopted and she's thrilled. She's over the moon. And what a contrast it would have been if what if Annie was a total brat and she she gets delivered unto this life and she looks back to that life of bondage and acts like the children of Israel. Oh, remember the leeks, remember the garlic. You know, we, we don't have that here in the wilderness. Yeah, but do you remember the slavery? Do you remember the bondage? You, you've, been, you've been freed from that. And so there's this, I guess there's just this, um, this comparison here. And there's, there's been a lot of people who lived a relatively full life in the world, got saved in their, maybe their 20s, their 30s, their 40s and are so tired of that life of bondage and of servitude. And to, to, to pick out the song that was in Annie, it's a hard knock life. It was, just, it was just hard. It was a life of hardship. And then they received the Holy Spirit and they received freedom from that bondage and, and it makes them happy. And I think about, you know, some of the young people and some of the children who, who actually don't have that comparison to make, who were raised in in this, it's, it's as if you never had the comparison of this is what it was like in the orphanage. And now I have a life where, you know, where, where I'm looked after by, you know, the, the savior type by, by this, you know, this, this, this heavenly figure, this, this father figure. And so not knowing that the things that might appeal to you, they only lead to bondage in the end. And, and hardship and things like that. But there's no comparison there. And I, I just wanted to point out that um, sometimes you, you don't need to experience that bondage or that hardship to know that it's you're better off in the pathway that was, um, I guess, given to you from, from the Lord. And, um, you know, it, there's, there's one direction in looking at it that way where this is the type of thing that we endeavor to explain and teach, teach our children as we, as we endeavor to raise them in the ways of the Lord and things like that. But, you know, as it doesn't matter how old we are, we still all have the flesh and it's still capable of, of looking towards, you know, its, its weaknesses and its, and its vices and its bondages and things like that. And if we ever find ourselves in, in a bit of, I guess, trouble or trial or things like that, and or questioning things, and, you know, um, you know we all have, have, our, have our thoughts and have our mind and, and the carnalness of, of this life to, to contend with. Um, but when you, this, this book is full of contrast between the, you know, the, the fallen man and the risen man, you know, the resurrected Christ and, and, and the, the yoke and the bondage of, of sin. And this is just one example of, you know, and I, and I picked a, a, a simple movie from the 80s to, to demonstrate something that as we go throughout all of these scriptures, we can find a multitude of them that try to get us to, hey, bring your mind back to this. The, the, the fundamentals of your salvation, what you've been freed from and what you have now and take, take everything, you know, as it is, you know, the, this life is full of challenges and things like that, but much better it would be to, you know, it, it's, it's like, what servitude would you rather have? Would you rather have the servitude that Annie had in the orphanage under was it Hannigan or, or whatever that was? Or would you rather have the servitude under, you know, Daddy Warbucks where he's saying, hey, don't, you know, this is what I require of you. Don't just ex think that you can, you know, act that way or, or do that. This is still expected from you just because you have a good life. And take it and, and see the full package. And it, and it causes us to, to kind of just take a step back and, and think, you know, 
so much better is is that path than if I was to look back at at at, at an old one or or look back at one that you know might seem appealing but will only have bondage in the end. Anyways, I'll, I'll leave things there. Hand it back to Brother Ian. All right, praise the Lord. Wonderful to hear all the different blessings from the brothers. And, um, you know, full night of blessing. We can all rejoice in that. And uh, obviously the Lord's working there. And uh, we rejoice for everybody that shared things tonight, whether it be testimonies and the hymns and the the, uh, the word itself. But we'll get down for a time of prayer now. And if there be any needs, please come forward. We'll commit that onto the Lord.